At first, it started out great, our relationship. And uh, this guy was my knight in shining armor. Hey guys, Timmy Don Avery here with Visual Testaments. I'm hey um, glad you guys stopped by to check out another video. We've been actually really excited about all the testimonies and things like that that yeah. we have gotten um, on our YouTube channel. And thank you so much for looking at yeah. them, watching them, subscribing to them, sharing them. That helps us tremendously. So yeah. we thank you so much for doing that. Um, They've been very impactful. Very impactful. Yeah. A lot of views. And, and so, again, if you've watched them, haven't seen them, go check them out because okay. there's so much... Um, use in special especially like sharing them to other people that yeah. you know might have gone through something similar to the video that you might have watched or the testimony that you might have heard on there and so if you thought of somebody that might want to hear that or need to mm -hmm. hear that go ahead and share that's like yes. an indicator like hey i just need to share this with yes. some friends so so make sure you hit the like subscribe yeah. and share this uh, video today um i think is a special treat just because dawn is going to share a testimony uh, something that she's kind of um, experienced in her life and mm -hmm. I think it was kind of reminisced to you because of one of those high-profile cases that have been out lately that you've been following and, and it's actually kind of near and dear to us because kind of we're in the same similar situation when it comes to traveling and things like that right and so um, but um, you and I were talking about this and it and it and it triggered like a rem uh, a memory of something that you experienced in your own life and so deeply and I know that that caused you to want to share kind of your testimony about um, what you kind of experienced that was somewhat similar to similar sim similar type of relationship that you had right yeah. right so um, I know that right now there's currently um, like he said a big profile case um, where a young girl she was 22 mm -hmm. um, they recently found her body um, and her boyfriend is currently, I don't know if they found him yet at this point. At this point, I don't know. Um, but I know that he had been missing. Um, he had shown up, at, I guess, at his family's house. And then he ended up um, missing. Yeah. 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 So, um, we, we were talking about that case. And it was interesting because what I didn't realize was some of the, some of the, questions as Tim was fleshing it out was was actually becoming somewhat of a trigger to me mm -hmm. in some things that I had been through in the past and and we both agreed that this is super important to talk about because yeah. a lot of people um, are experienced stuff like this and they don't talk about it yeah. enough find themselves in a similar situation yeah yes mm -hmm. um, the fact that we are also RVing yeah, um, just country. like yeah. just like they were and we understand I mean obviously we're um, like you know twice their age almost <laughs> um, we, yeah, we are, we, are. Yeah. we understand um, what it looks like to do what we're doing yeah it's tough um, across the country uh, just I know they were doing it you know to experience an adventure and have fun mm -hmm. and all that and we do do that but we also use this as a ministry and we yeah. um, we just know that it's it's tough it is yeah. it's not it's not an easy journey and so we can only imagine what it's like when you're trying to um, push forward into something and the finances are tough yeah. or things happen that you don't expect to happen and you still want to press on and um, looking for work when you're yeah. out on the journey, uh, when you're going from place to place and you don't have a um, standard address, so you you can't get a standard job. So with that being said, we understand how the arguments, the yeah. um, nervousness, the stress of it all, I mean, even the little day-to-days of set up, tear down, um, but but really being able to understand what the finances <laughs> yeah. look like. It's some tension on just these different things, especially just different opinions of how you, how you think and how you perceive the world. Yeah. Them being a super young couple, I don't know how long they've been dating or how long they've been in together. But just know that like all those things, I feel like attributed to some of those decisions that they made and whatever happened, yeah. happened. So I, we still don't know what happened. Yeah. But but just to say that you know there is a lot of tension when you're right. when you're when you are traveling. But there's a lot of fun. But if you don't if you don't have the experience of being together as a couple for very long, and then you go out and do something like this, yeah. it, it causes a lot of tension when you don't really know each other very yeah. well. You know, and I feel sense. like we've obviously been set up um, to yeah. work together for so many years mm -hmm. already. So we kind of knew you got to know. <laughs> yeah. You're living in a very tight quarter with yeah. someone. Um, but in the past, when I was actually her age, um, I remember uh, I had set out with my boyfriend and um, to, to 
save face and keep names changed. That's what I'm going to do. But I wanted to um, share this story without, um, you know, sure giving names. out names. Yeah. And I think that it's important that to point out that I was also her age uh, mm -hmm. when this stuff happened. And I, well, actually a, about a year younger, but yeah. I know that um, at first it started out great, our relationship. And uh, this guy was my knight in shining armor. And Because you guys were living together, right? Yes. Yeah, not had, at first. Not at first, but you guys were dating and then you moved right. in together and started living together. Right. So um, when, when, I, when I read up about their whole history, it seemed, you know, from what they've shared so far in the articles, it definitely brought back a lot to me mm -hmm. because it seemed to follow right in suit with so with what I feel like so many people, mostly females, but yeah. even some males, have fallen in line with finding their knight in shining armor, putting all their um, eggs in a basket, not knowing their identity in Christ, and um, and just banking on another human making you happy. Mm. Um, and it really, I noticed it still kind of caused a trigger in me when he and I were talking about this, Tim, because um, it, it's just so difficult, A, as uh, someone who's lived through it, but B, yeah. as a parent, I was, it really, really touched my heart to feel um, just a compassion for her parents. It's tough, man. Who didn't know at first where she was and then, and then unfortunately got that the news that they'd found her body. Well. Mm. And ironically, to the same places that we've been traveling yeah. to. Yeah, um, we were there, yeah. We're so, I look back and I think, you know, gosh, what her mom must have felt, what my mom probably felt when I left and moved in with him. Um, and at first, everything was perfect. Yep. I mean, because um, this guy was super cool, calm, collected, um, he actually was the lead singer for a band and he had a ton of friends major influencer which and i'm sure it added to the excitement of it being, did. Yeah, being together yeah it did because we were a lot alike in the ways that we were very extroverted we loved to be out and about we loved to connect with other people um major major extrovert um and it wasn't but about probably six months in. So it's not like it happened quickly. Yeah. Six months in of just everything seeming perfect to realizing that there's this other person that's there. Mm. Um, and, you know, at first when it happened, I completely <sighs> made excuses and was like, gosh, I totally deserved that. Um, but as things led on, it, it got to where... Um, he knew that he had to apologize mm. because it just got to where it became more and more present where he was um, acting out in private wow. um, and then just really making me feel like I, I was questioning did I did I deserve that did I wow. do that did, maybe I s said that wrong and constantly walking on it eggshells and again mm. did not have my identity in Christ um, clearly, because I wouldn't have been in a relationship where I'd moved in with him. I wouldn't have been uh, living with him like that. And I would have also known who I am. So I wouldn't have been mm -hmm. questioning that. Um, I think that the interesting thing is, is that on top of that, it really, it was an attempt. Um, because I wasn't under a blessing of God, obviously, I was, I was completely out of disobedience. Yeah. Um, living a life that was not a uh, biblical, but which I think kind of added to a lot of those situations. You know, not to say that you know married couples don't go through it, yeah. but like you're you're adding that much that level of um, of tension when you're when you're not married, you're not in covenant with one another. You, you're sharing some things and you're agreeing on some things, but if you're not making that covenant, I think you're just adding a covenant of marriage. You're not. You're just you're adding to that that level of 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 tension and, and causation of just um, life of just a mess because yeah arguments yeah just 
because you don't you don't understand like how to, how to be with another person you just think it's cool to hang out and that just hey let's just live together and, and don't understand the principles of husband and wife yeah the intimacy yeah. the intimacy when the intimacy is not there with the father it's yeah. not going to be there with you and your other relationships yep. and especially one that you are um if you're in a relationship mm -hmm. where you've made another lover other than christ you're gonna you're gonna regret it yeah. it doesn't ever play out well um, like you're back, you're saying about being I, I, like your identity. Yeah, if you don't know who you're, who you are in Christ, and right. you know, trying to bring in another person into a relationship that you don't even know who you are yourself, you don't even know what, how to, how to, how to love or how to be loved. How can you then, therefore, love another person to the point where, you know, um, you're, you're not, you're not just taking, you're, you're also giving of mm -hmm. yourself. You're not just taking from the relationship. Like I'm just in this relationship because. This relationship allows me to do X, Y, Z. I'm, I'm waiting for my family. I can, I can finally just have my own rules. If that's, that, if that's your only motivation to move out, and not understand the, the principle of marriage, then you're gonna have a lot of tension when that person has that person's needs and Correct. their desires and things like that. And now you, you, you have a lot of clashing coming together because you don't, you don't understand marriage. You don't understand no. what, it, what it's like to, to serve one another. You don't understand and be there relationship. For somebody else. You don't understand relationship. No. And so. Yeah, and yeah. so understanding, like like we said, our identity. It, uh, first and foremost, understanding that your identity as a as a child of God. Yeah. You are a son and a daughter, and when a son understands he's a son, first of all, he's not gonna he's not gonna have you move in with him. Right. Number two, he's also not going to mistreat um, God's daughter. Yeah. Uh, but but you know, also on the flip side of that, God's daughter isn't gonna allow what what you permit is up to you yeah. you have a choice to say what the father would what would the father do with you he's he wouldn't treat you that way he's yeah. not going to make you think you're crazy he's not going to give you all these constant doubts in your mind and so i just kept walking that out and playing it out and honestly mm. i i wanted to just kind of um share with you because i think i, I was talking to somebody else briefly um about this and i had i had said you know i've I think someone had said, like, gosh, they seem, she seems like maybe she was kind of wigged out, you know, like she was really upset, obviously, in the videos, and and I said, yeah, I can totally understand, but I acted that way with, with the person I was with at that age. Mm -hmm. um, you're you're constantly in defense for them yep. because you're hoping that you're, if, if anything happens to them, your world will crumble. Yeah. You're having to try and keep it all together because that's you've invested so much by this point you've invested in a lie and it, to keep the deck of cards going it has to work yeah and you are going to look for any type of glue any adhesive whatever you can do to keep the cards the house of cards together you yeah. really are and um you know beyond being scared i was uh i was so often trying to get people to see that i was I was getting abused, but I really wouldn't say it out loud. Um, cause honestly to hear, to hear yourself say that is like, you know, you, you're having to answer the question you've been asking yourself a million times in your mind over and over, which mm. is how did I get here? Wow. Especially when you're discerned. Let me talk to you people that are discerned when you're discerned and you go anything you do that you're like, gosh, I deeply regret it. You end up thinking a million times over, how did I not see that coming? Mm. It's almost like the enemy works on your gift of wow. discernment to turn it against you. And you're like, how did I not see this coming? I smelled it. I saw it. I sensed it in every form. And I still yep. took it on and made excuses. And, um, and that just comes back to one simple thing that I'm going to get to as we close. Um, <laughs> just trying to protect the person because obviously it costs you big time if, if anything happens to the relationship. Yeah. Um, I think that it's, it's easy to sit there and say, you know, that they're a narcissist. They're, you know, they're putting you through all this stuff, you know, but you've also, you can't control other people who right. you can control is yourself. Right. And it's time that it's time. There came a time where I had to look in the mirror and go, what part of me needs this? Mm. What in me is not just okay with this, but I actually it, yeah. need it. It becomes an addiction. Mm. Um, and I had to just look myself in the mirror and take one hard look and, and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal that 
and that was a t that was a tough day. Well, because you're saying because you know to be addicted, you're saying <clears throat> you're, you weren't saying like you're addicted to be abused. You're addicted to the other thing. What was the other thing you're saying that you're addicted to? The apology. You're saying something like yes, I was addicted to the apology, and it was really about um, the apology was something that I wasn't getting. <laughs> it was the it was the closest level of intimacy that this person knew how to provide. Mm -hmm. Um, and as twisted as it was, because it was, it was just that it wasn't, yeah. it was an apology. It was no form of repentance. There's a difference between I'm sorry and wow. repentance. They're two totally different things. Yep. One is saying, I agree to, to turn from this because I understand that I can't do this by myself. Yeah. I'm going to partner with the Holy Spirit and turn from these ways. I'm going to renounce the things I'm doing. I'm going to turn from those ways. That's not what was happening. It was a constant apology, a constant I'm sorry. And if and he knows to this day, sorry doesn't mean anything to me. Words don't mean much to me unless they come from the Father. But from people, I usually have a tough time. I'll watch people and, and their actions mean everything to me yeah. as a result of that relationship. I put a lot more emphasis on, emphasis on action. A person's action because I mean, of that. Yeah, I mean that's I mean that makes the whole adage true that you know action speaks louder than words b because it's it's true. You know you could say anything you want, but what what you really have in your heart, you know, as you act those things out, that's mm -hmm. that's going to speak louder than any words. Is is the way you respond or how how you treat somebody else? Do you enjoy hearing powerful testimonies like these? Read Tim and Donna's books available on Amazon now. From shameful acts of adultery, sexual abuse, and other bad choices, they share how Jesus redeemed them and set them free. Get your copies today. So closing, I, I think I, I just wanted to point out that a lot of it was I, I had a need. I looked in the mirror and the Holy Spirit showed me that you have a need to perform. You have a need to do mm -hmm. rather than just be. And, you know... That need to perform played out in a million different ways from my job, my career, mm. being the top and everything I had to do. I had to, couldn't just, you know, couldn't rest, couldn't spend time with my daughter, couldn't do all. I had to be the top. Mm. So it's 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 that performance that had to get rooted out, had to be identified, had to be own, I had to own it and give it over to the Holy Spirit. Wow. And um, and it was that need to do rather than to be, because at that mm. point, if I can just if I can just be his savior. Then I, if I can do something, I can change him. If I can love him enough, if I could just love him enough, if I could just, mm. if I could just help him when he's hurting, you know, well, he did this because his family taught him that. Well, he, he doesn't understand this because he's been through that. And well, his history and, and I can love him past that. I can, I'll be enough to change him. And that won't ever happen. That's dangerous. It's exhausting. That's because you become the savior of that person or you're try attempting to be you're the savior. You're attempting to be. You never will be. And you'll well yourself out and you'll continue to put yourself in a right. cycle of pattern of just abuse. Right. Trying to feel you like never you can will save be. him or change him. Yeah. Well, and, and the worst thing is it goes back to as we close. I got my priorities out of line of being a son and daughter. Yes. I am not the savior. Jesus already finished the work of the cross. He is his savior. I am to be the father's daughter, mm. period, period. That's all I am. If that person can't accept you for that, then they clearly don't know who they are. Mm -hmm. And I just encourage you to um, get, a, get a bunch of spirit-filled friends that help lift you up. And there's yeah. everything in you that usually tries to pull you away when you're in a relationship with that, especially them, because they need you. That spirit that's mm -hmm. in them that needs to be broke off, that's not your that's not your problem. Get out of the way. Um, you, 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 they may be attracted and trying to pull you back in and constantly keep yeah. you from leaving, thus the, thus the, the apologies. But y you um, don't let your soul burn out like that. Yeah. The soul care comes from being with the Father and um, being in the Spirit. And so I just encourage you guys today. Um, we love you guys. Yeah. We we are praying for you know that family um, that's going through this right now. We pray for all of those who go yes. through abuse, especially sex trafficking and things like that. We see so much of it um, in situations just like that too. And um, and there's just so much happening across across our world today male and female um and so yeah, we just pray we for we pray that mm. if you're watching this you will just invite jesus 
um, into the the yeah, situation absolutely. we just pray the blood of Jesus over your situation we just we just release all the burdens over to him let the yoke go it is not yours to carry his you, is Jesus. easy his yoke is easy his burden is light you are not a slave to sin thank you are Jesus. a child of God yes Lord. we thank you Lord thank you Jesus Amen. Well, thank, thank you, guys, you guys. so much for watching this share this like this yeah. and we'll see you guys on the next one Ha, ha, ha.